Hey guys, welcome to Sabina's Mind. Uh, today I want to put in a video about uh, some tips uh, before you start traveling. Uh, I don't know if you're like a frequent traveler, so if you travel a lot already, especially abroad, this information it will probably be not that uh, much special to you. But I would suggest you uh, watch it anyway, because I might have some tips that will uh, sound very normal and very, uh, how you say it, very easy. And that you think like, but I never do that. So today let's start on the uh, one of the important things when you start to travel, your passport. My passport at this moment, because I don't have many uh, belongings, is actually most of my precious belongings I ever had because it gives me access to almost the whole world. So if you go travel, uh, especially if you go abroad, you need a passport. If you uh, are traveling in your own country uh, by plane or train, you probably need an identification card. European people can travel in lots of countries in Europe with an identi uh, identity card. You have to be careful that if you travel abroad and you have your passport, that it's still uh, the expiration date is only sometimes three or six months after you left the country to go back to your own country again. Why is that? Well, <laughs> give it a nice reason. Uh, a lot of countries want you to have a, a, a non-expired uh, passport in case you extend your stay. You can uh, have an accident and you have to stay in a hospital. So uh, if you get in the hospital for like, uh, uh, a whole month, they still want you to be able to travel out the country with a valid passport. So you have to look into that, uh, with, which is what is the expiration date of your passport. If you travel a long time, take a photocopy with your mobile phone uh, of your passport. I even send it to my own email, so I always have access to it. And better yet, also make color photocopies of your passport and have it along with you. You don't know if you go to a country and you get robbed, then you can show them the copy and say like it's stolen and they probably can have all the information already from there. So it saves you a lot of translation and a lot of frustration. Also a lot of times, uh, a lot of hotels uh, especially in Asia, they want actually to have your passport for security reasons somehow, identification for the government. I don't like to do that because uh, a lot of those hotels are like, they have uh, some uh, uh, desks there that cannot even be closed, so I don't like to give it there. A lot of times they accept a copy of your passport, so if you already have a copy of your passport, you can give it to them. So that's uh, so you can hold on to your own passport. Uh, actually, officially in the Netherlands, I think it's in all the countries. On the last page, it says that the passport is actually not yours. Uh, it's the the, uh, uh, the passport is owned by your government, and they can always have the right to claim it back from you. So it's not used to give to other people. So actually, it's also illegal to do that. But hey, that's something else. If you travel abroad, you also sometimes need a visa. If you go to a country and you need a visa, you can look it up on the internet. I cannot give to you the uh, uh, links to it because for every country it's different. Uh, a lot of times visa are pretty easy to accept. If I, uh, for example, travel to America, I have to apply for an uh, ESTA form and I can do it online and I got it back like in five minutes that it was okay to come. Uh, but for some countries you need uh, to fill out more forms. So if you have to fill out more forms, it takes much more time. It's also, uh, so if you have to do it already in front in your own country, you can look it online. There's most of the times there's a visa and you can see it. A lot of them uh, also have uh, like e-visas. So you can apply for it on the internet. Be careful and search, double check if it's the original one. Cause I, when I traveled to Vietnam, there were like 
10 different fake sites that say they give you an e-visa, which is not an e-visa. And that's also a good example, uh, Vietnam. I traveled to Vietnam and arranged my visa in advance and I could, uh, could stay for three months. They also have visa on arrival, that's pretty okay. Price worthy, it's also okay too. But they only do visa on arrival for 30 days. So that's also something to look in for you if you want to. And we'll like said again, if you have to apply a visa, you apply it before you go there. Look into it how long it takes. Because in some countries it can take maybe a week or two weeks before you get your passport back and you're in. So it will be a shame if you miss your holiday because you don't have your passport or that it uh, you cannot travel in between because you had planned something and you arranged your visa. So take care of that. Another thing is if you go on a long travel uh, and you don't know where you end up, you travel with two extra uh, passports, photos of yourself like in the passport. Because sometimes if you have to arrange a visa on arrival or some other weird occasions, they want you uh, to hand over a, pa a photo of yourself. So it's uh, quicker and more easy if you already have it on you. So that are my tips. Look at the expiration, expiry date of your passport always. Uh, look into it if you need a visa and how long it takes to arrange it. And always take pictures with you for uh, like the passport. I don't know how you call it in England, but you probably understand what I mean. Have your own pictures on you because sometimes you have to arrange a visa on arrival because you don't know where to go. See you next time for more tips. Bye!